been answered or even addressed in any sort of full way. My name is Rick Folks. I'm a structural engineer with over 40 years experience in engineering. I'm a president of my own engineering business here in Arizona since 1983. Prior to that, I was a vice president with prominent engineering firms in the Phoenix area. I have experience designing large structures, including power plant structures, shopping center structures, schools, commercial buildings, uh, you name it. I, I know structural design, and I know that on September 11th, when I saw those twin towers coming down, I knew there had to be more to the story than just a fire causing those failures that had to be a, a, a controlled demolition that we were witnessing. The government has lied to us and we need to get to the truth. Those victims deserve the truth. They deserve justice. What we have right now is a travesty of justice. The Freedom of Information Act requests to NIST by a registered structural engineer for calculations and analysis substantiating the walk-off failures of the horizontal girders from their seats at columns 79 and 81 was denied by NIST with the claim that releasing this data might jeopardize public safety. How could it possibly jeopardize public safety to tell people in the industry, engineers who were responsible for designing these buildings, how this failure could occur? That implies that anybody who requests or demands these calculations is a threat to public safety. Science is never secret when it's done right. Science is a way of finding out that is self-correcting and involves many people. Science isn't science unless it's published, unless it's openly published and made available for criticism. The thing that's most important about science is that it's a way of knowing. And it's a way of knowing that anyone can participate in. At the end of any kind of science activity, people will agree that they have collected evidence that, that illustrates a hypothesis and if it, the evidence is contradictory to the hypothesis you have to one has to abandon that hypothesis and look for another one the explanations from FEMA and from NIST don't add up but there is enormous circumstantial evidence circumstantial and actually physical evidence as well that would lead us to a different conclusion and the conclusion is controlled demolition it was a shame that after the collapse that a, a forensic unit, a forensic engineering unit didn't go into the debris and try to find at that time why the towers had collapsed. I'm sure there was other evidence uh, that, that could have given a better indication at the time that there was something else wrong. Any honest investigator would be looking at this and looking for explosives and so forth. The NIST investigation didn't go there. They just would, would not look for explosives. There have been explosives found in the dust, in the debris, but this has been uh, the work of independent researchers, not NIST. And the, the physical chemistry of everything that I wrote about is consistent with no other hypothesis and all of the testimony of eyewitnesses, all of the video evidence supports only controlled de uh, demolition as the cause of all three World Trade Center buildings uh, destruction. You don't have to be a chemical engineer to question that official story. It's very, very obvious. Both Building 7 and the towers were brought down by demolition. It couldn't have been any other possible way. That conclusion I, I come to based upon First of all, my training, uh, and my education, uh, particularly uh, my experience in uh, uh, blowing up uh, uh, major structures that had been designed to withstand blasts. The uh, experience that I had uh, gained uh, in the military and as an engineer uh, was irrefutable that those buildings were brought down by explosives. Well, the American Society of Civil Engineers was brought into this investigation early on, issued a report without any significant forensic examination. For the American Society of Civil Engineers to ignore those events is extremely disturbing and uh, is a violation, in my opinion, of their professional code of ethics. The only thing that you can say about their participation in this is that it must have been an orchestrated cover-up.
So the preconceived notion of NIST is that there's no evidence for explosives, and so there's no point in looking. Uh, that is the most unscientific thing that you can possibly think of, not to look because you don't expect to find evidence, and in fact the evidence is overwhelming. They state these conclusions for which there's virtually no evidence, and then they ignore conclusions that can be drawn from the evidence. It is my opinion as a former 12 Bravo combat engineer, well trained in the use of explosives, that this building, all three buildings were brought down as a, control, as a result of controlled demolitions. Elevator company personnel had 24-7 access to the shafts, which is the normal time in the evening and early morning hours when they perform their maintenance. And, uh, of course, uh, their access to the elevator shafts gave them total access to the surrounding core columns, the interior of the core columns. It took some kind of uh, consciousness raising on my part before I was willing to look at the, at the possibilities. And really, you need to go where the evidence leads. We know we've been lied to about 9-11. We don't know for sure who did it. We don't know exactly how they did everything. And that's why we need a new investigation to find out. But in the meantime, there are things we do know. We do know that there was a massive cover-up, that there was evidence hidden and destroyed. And given these conclusions, what remedy do these professionals recommend? The three skyscrapers were taken down in a controlled demolition. And all we're asking for is a new investigation. And the NIST also will investigate the dust for remaining explosives. At Firefighters for 9-11 Truth, that's what we're asking for, is we're asking for an investigation that follows national standards. I'm Jody Gibbs. I was licensed for general building and heavy construction as well as architecture over 35 years ago. I was educated at Yale University, the Harvard Graduate School of Design, the Yale Graduate School of Art and Architecture, and I taught at MIT as an adjunct faculty for a number of years in the Graduate School of Architecture. My reasons for uh, looking and demanding and urging people to uh, see that we get a judicial investigation are really very simple. No high-rise steel structure has ever been destroyed by a fire in the history of construction. We have eyewitness testimony of firemen, policemen, news reporters, and occupants of the building to explosions, an enormous number of eyewitness testimonies. Fourth, the buildings fall at a speed uh, which can only occur if the structure has been removed, the vertical structure. Large multi-ton beams were hurled hundreds of yards laterally. Gravity works vertically, not laterally. We also now have the evidence of thermite and thermate explosives. Most of these things were not even mentioned in the 9-11 Commission report. It's for this reason I urge all architects and engineers to look into the matter, look at the evidence that is available, and sign on to the demands of architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth in demanding that we get a judicial investigation. I signed the, the petition for architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth uh, because I felt it was an organization trying to get it at the truth of what in fact actually happened, what brought those buildings down. So what I'm looking for is, is a new investigation where all of the original uh, information and tests and hypotheses are re-examined as well as the ones that have surfaced since, the new ones, including the, the allegations of uh, controlled demolition. I don't think any of us are pointing fingers at this time. We're just saying, let's reopen it. Let's look at it objectively. Let's look at the evidence, not these fabricated computer models and hearsay and all these predetermined conclusions. Uh, let's really open it up again and um, investigate this thing properly and then come to conclusions. In my 37 years of experience as a structural engineer, I've never seen modes of failure such as have been exhibited in the case of these buildings, and that's why I feel that we need a new independent investigation to explain the destruction of these three buildings. I strongly support a, an independent 
investigation into what actually occurred. There are many problems and in fact as a forensic engineer I can tell you that unfortunately the government has destroyed much of the evidence that we could do an appropriate investigation that an investigation could be done that would be independent of the government, independent of all of the influences that obviously were in effect uh, during the NIST investigation. Based on the evidence available, I feel that we must demand a new investigation into the destruction of the World Trade Center towers and NIST itself. We need to have an investigation of NIST themselves. I believe that the reports that came out are not true. I believe there's a lot of and a lot of information that was omitted uh, blatantly or, or otherwise. I strongly feel that an international commission should be formed to look at this matter uh, in an unbiased manner and come to a conclusion that could be presented to the entire engineering community. We have a professional responsibility and I urge every engineer and architect and demolitions expert and anybody that has any knowledge in this field to examine the evidence and stand up and become because the rest of the world is dependent upon us. I would like to see uh, a real investigation. I'd like to see I'd like to see people on the inside who really know what they're what happened. I'd like to see some of those uh, come out. There's some very good scientists, I'm sure, at NIST, and their life's work is getting distorted and uh, used for political purposes. What happened on 9-11 is not something that is just going to go away. This is very pertinent to us today. I wish to further the investigation, and I want to make a difference because I want this to be a safe and better place for my children. I signed the petition on the uh, Architect and Engineers 9-11 Truth uh, website mainly because I wanted to uh, stand behind the families that lost people on 9-11. Uh, the 9-11 Truth movement was started by the families uh, that lost loved ones on that day and they were all out there alone screaming for help and our own country was ignoring them and ignoring their needs and not taking care of them the way we should have after that happened. We have not been told the truth. We deserve the truth and so do the victims. We need to come together again as a country. Uh, I believe that this one event split our country in half. And the only way we're going to come back together is to reopen the wound, talk about this in an open dialogue. Most of us who have lived with the events of 9-11 have, as a result, experienced some kind of trauma. It can be very difficult to come to terms with what actually happened at the World Trade Center. In fact, someone told me recently, I wouldn't believe what you're telling me even if it were true. Our petition signers with psychological expertise have stepped forward to offer their insight. While this segment is clearly outside the knowledge base of the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, these experts in psychology highlight their valuable experience for us as to why this evidence can still be so difficult for people to accept. At this point we have nine years of hard scientific evidence that disproves the government theory about what happened on September 11th and yet people continue to be either oblivious to the fact that this information exists or completely resistant to looking at this information. So the question becomes why? Why is it that people have so much trouble hearing this information? From my work, I think we would be remiss not to look at the impact of trauma. My name is Marty Hopper and I'm a PhD clinical psychologist. I've been working and living for the past 30 years here in Boulder, Colorado. For the past 11 years, my work has focused on helping people who have experienced personal trauma. Now, as we know,